In this video, we're going to introduce a formula called the quadratic formula for solving quadratic equations, and we'll take the first couple of minutes to see where the formula comes from. So the first thing I want to do is illustrate uh, the technique that's used to derive the formula with a specific example. Imagine we're trying to solve x squared minus 4x minus 32 equals 0, but I imagine I don't remember how to factor the left side. Um, on the other hand, suppose I would know how to recognize how to factor the left side if it was a perfect square. So this is what I get if I have x minus 2 squared. So what I want to do is take advantage of that by rewriting this equation so the left side is this perfect square. What I could do is start by moving the 32 over by adding it to both sides, and then add another 4 to both sides. And so now I've got the left side that I am imagining I recognize that I can factor as x minus 2 squared. Now what's the point? I'm imagining this particular situation because I've got something squared on the left side. I'm going to be able to take square roots. The right side simplifies to 6, and the left side simplifies to the absolute value of x minus 2. And I know how to solve that if I get rid of the absolute value, I introduce plus or minus on the other side. Isolate x by adding 2 to both sides, and now I can see that there are two solutions. One of them is 2 plus 6, which is 8, and the other is 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. And those are the two x values that solve the original equation. So this example contains all the ideas I'm about to use to come up with the quadratic formula. I'm going to go through this derivation fairly quickly because the main point is for us to be able to use the quadratic formula when I'm done. Um, but he here's the derivation so that you can say you've seen it. Start with an equation like the one we had. Imagine first that we're going to divide everything by the coefficient of x squared to make our numbers smaller. And then let's move the constant term to the right side. And the idea is I'm imagining I know how to factor perfect squares. So what I do is I add something to both sides that makes the left side into a perfect square. In particular, this is b over 2a quantity squared. And this is 2 times b over 2a. So by adding the right thing to both sides of the equation, the left side turns out to be factored as x plus b over 2a, quantity squared. Now it's got the right form, so I can take the square root of both sides, I simplify on the left side changing square root of something squared into an absolute value. I get rid of the absolute value by adding a plus or minus on one side. And then I can do some more algebra to isolate x. And I can change the right side the square root of a fraction into a fraction of square roots. The reason I do that is because the denominator simplifies. And now these two denominators match, which means I can combine everything into a single fraction. So again, that was pretty fast, but the point is we've come up with a nice formula we call the quadratic formula, which makes it very easy to solve a quadratic equation if we see all the coefficients. So here's the formula again for reference, and let's use it to find the solutions of this quadratic equation, x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. The first thing you want to do is identify the coefficients. So a represents the coefficient of x squared. You don't see a coefficient, but you can always imagine there's a hidden 1 there. So a is 1. b is the coefficient of x, the whole coefficient, including the sign. So that's how we get negative 4. And c is the constant term, which is negative 12. Plug all of those into this formula. Be very careful, it's a good idea to use parentheses. Everywhere I had a value in the original formula, I'm replacing it with parentheses and plugging in the appropriate number. So that's going to help me avoid mistakes. For example, I want to make sure that I'm squaring negative 4, 
and getting 16. I, if I forget the parentheses, I'm liable to just square 4 uh, and then take the negative of that, which is the wrong answer. It's going to give me the wrong sign. So I want to be careful and using those extra parentheses everywhere I'm plugging in a value helps me avoid that sort of mistake. So then you simplify. Negative 4 squared is 16. Uh, 4 times 12 is 48. And there are two minus signs. M negative times a negative gives you a positive. In the denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. Then you can simplify what's inside the square root. 16 plus 48 is 64. 64 is a nice, perfect square. The square root of 64 is 8. And so now I have two solutions. 4 plus 8 divided by 2 and 4 minus 8 divided by 2. Those simplify to 6 and 2. So x equals 6 and x equals negative 2 are the solutions of this equation. Let's do one more. Let's find the solutions of 2x squared equals negative 5x plus 3. And if I do that using the quadratic formula, I have to be careful my first step should be rewriting it in standard form because that's the only form where I can see the coefficients correctly. In this case, the coefficients are 2, 5, and negative 3. Now we plug all of those in for the right symbols in the quadratic formula and simplify some more. 5 squared is 25, 4 times 2 times 3 is 24, 25 and 24 give you 49, and again, we had two negative signs here, negative times a negative is a positive, that's why we add it instead of subtracting. And then square root of 49 is 7, and finally we can write down our two explicit answers. Uh, negative 5 plus 7 over 4 is 1 half, and negative 5 minus 7 over 4 is negative 3.